Hello, everyone. In this video, we're going to begin talking about sets. We're going to talk about what a set is and some special sets that will be used a bunch in both this class and some classes you may take in the future. So a set, as I've written here, is a unordered collection of distinct objects. That's it. Distinct meaning that they are different. We write down sets in a variety of ways. I will show you a couple of different notations. The first notation is going to be if S is a set, you could just list the things in the set. So you, you could list, for example, the numbers one, two, three. That is a set containing one, two, three. It says unordered, though. So this set is the exact same as the set two, three, one is the exact same as the set 321 or any other permutation of those elements. It doesn't matter what the elements are. All that matters is what elements are in the set. That is the important thing to keep track of. This is one of our notations for sets. Let's look at some other examples. You could also have a set that contains characters or even strings. and numbers. You could have a set that contains numbers, characters, and even other sets. Also completely valid. You can combine sets in a variety of ways. We'll talk about those ways later. But for now, we'll say that a set is a collection of distinct objects and that we can list out the elements. There are other ways that you can denote a set. So for example, you can sort of give a formula describing the set. So I could say S equals the set of X such that X is greater than or equal to five. That colon is read as the word such that, and this is the set of all X that are greater than or equal to five. However, this isn't necessarily good because there's a bunch of different types of numbers. Hmm. So before we start dealing with this notation, let us mention some special sets that are well known and consistently named the same thing. Our first set is going to be n, which is the natural numbers. Natural numbers. This is the set that contains 0, 1, 2, three, and so on. All of the positive integers and the number zero. There are some people which define this set to not include zero. It's a contentious topic. For my class, I'm going to put zero in there. Other classes you take or other people you talk to may not do so. It's up in the air. Our second set is Z, which is the integers. I'm going to list these in the following order, zero, negative one, one, negative two, two, negative three, three, and so on. So that includes the negative numbers as well. Our next set is the quotients or rationals. This is, I'm going to write only as a sentence, all fractions. with integer numerators and denominators. I might have spelled denominators wrong. Let's hope I didn't. So you, you could write this in our set notation that I was trying to introduce down here. But it's a bit awkward because you can have simplified fractions and you don't want to double count things and include duplicates. And we're not going to do that yet. We might do that later. Our last two sets, well, our last three sets are going to be the real numbers. This is difficult to define without getting into a lot of analysis. In general, this includes things like Pi, E, the golden ratio B, and a whole bunch of other numbers. 
It turns out that the majority of numbers, with some mathematical definition of majority, are real numbers and that there's almost no rational numbers. Having said that, these aren't too easy to write down because they can't be written as fractions, these numbers that aren't rational but are real. So we have a couple of them that maybe are famous, pi, e, phi, which is the golden ratio, all of those. There's also the complex numbers. And these do lend themselves well to our notation that I was trying to introduce down here. This is the set of all numbers that look like a plus b times i, where i is the imaginary unit, the square root of negative 1, where a is in this symbol, this weird e means in. Then maybe I'll draw that more carefully to show you. It's in the real numbers. And B is in the real numbers. I'm going to write down for you just so we can make sure we know what this means. This is read as the word in. It means that A comes from the real numbers. And just to make sure there's no confusion, I is radical negative 1. We have one final important set, potentially the most important set which is the empty set. It's like a zero with a line through it. This is the set that contains no elements. So these are our well-known sets. The notation I've used here looks a little weird. These double lined letters, it's called blackboard bold. It's a way that people used to write bold things on a blackboard. So these are all just theoretically bold. I'll use the same notation when I type notes for you as well. It is these four, or sorry, five sacred letters are used very, very commonly. And then that zero with a line through is the empty set. There are some other notations people might use for that, but I'm going to stick to this notation. These are well-known sets that you are sort of expected to know what they are. Other than this, there aren't necessarily uh, other sets we'll use that have unique letters in this way. So... With that in mind, the set S, let's maybe make it more well-defined. Let's instead make it the set of all X coming from the real numbers. So it's the set of all X in the real numbers such that X is greater than or equal to five. This is different than the set of all X in the, nat the integers such that X is greater than or equal to five. For example, The top set contains the number 10 divided by 1.1, which can be written as an integer. That is in S. Similarly, it contains things like pi squared, which is somewhere above 9. This is in S as well. So these are three kind of notations. I glossed over the middle one, which is describe it in words. That's another notation that's completely common to use. You either enumerate the elements like we did in these first three examples or for some of our special sets. Or you can use what's called the set builder notation where you say is the set of all some sort of variable, in this case, X, that come from a set and satisfy something else. So I would read this line as the set of X in the real numbers such that x is greater than or equal to 5. That colon is read as the word such that. 